seven. Ah, yeah, bugging. Am I ahead there? We read from verse thirty. Verse thirty. Ire. All these died in faith, guided and sustained by it, without receiving the tangible fulfillment of God's promise, only having seen, meaning anticipated them, and having welcomed them from a distance, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. Carry on now, on. Those who say such things make it clear that they are looking for a country of their own. And if they had been thinking of that country from which they departed as their true home, they would have had a continuing opportunity to return. But the truth is, truth is that they were longing for a better country. That is a heavenly one. For that reason, God is not ashamed of them all to be called their God, even to be surnamed their God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, that is, as the testing of his faith was still in progress, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promise of God was ready to sacrifice his only son of promise, to whom it was said, through Isaac your descendants shall be called, shall be called, for he considered it reasonable to believe that God was able to raise Isaac even from among the dead. Let's end on 15, it's fine. And if they had been thinking of that country from which they departed as their true home, they would have had a, a continual opportunity to return. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Maybe today we can make this our own service. Because what I want to speak here is for our people here. So let's read again from verse 13 to 15. Yes. All these died in faith, guided and sustained by it, without receiving the tangible fulfillment of God's promises. Only having seen or anticipated them and having welcomed them from a distance and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. Now these who say such things make it clear that they are looking for a country of their own. And if they had been thinking of that country from which they departed as their true home, they would have had a continuing opportunity to return. Amen. Amen. Can we write faith Amen. and make a bracket our lifestyle? I can read one letter to Can we talk about lifestyle? We talk about the way of life. Our way of living. We can hear there are people who died in faith. We are learning that faith here is not, it's not written for us only to receive. It's written for our own lifestyle. There are promises there are prophecies that will never be fulfilled. According to what we are reading here. So we have to remain as people having faith. And these people who died in faith contained by faith 
They never blame God that he didn't do what he said. The Bible says they could see what was proven. They knew God would do it. But they had another desire. Because faith to them makes them to see what was said. Faith makes Amen. them to understand that what they have been promised will come to pass. It and they see it. And it. But the Bible says they had a desire to see another country. In other words, God gave them desire. Though you have faith, there will be a desire. What will drive your faith is your desire. The Bible says that those that the, these people understood they lived as strangers and travelers. And the Bible says people who live in that way they show that they to live somewhere. It shows that they lived as strangers. They had a hope and desire to live somewhere. So the faith at the end of it is the fulfillment of your faith. The end of your faith is what God wants to do. Not when you are being processed when Not when you are living in this world. There will be a time where what you are crying for when you receive it, you realize it's not a blessing. Because someone can still receive better. So now faith has to be our lifestyle, whether we receive or not. But the truth is, God will never fail you. Your faith will never fail you. Your faith will never fail you. When you have faith. If you are hearing me say amen. So the Bible says these people so Bible they desire to live in that country and by the faith that sustained them they went to the country but if they had a desire when they reached there that they want to return they could still come back that faith is so powerful. It's a powerful tool. If they had a desire, in other words, their last level was there. But they would still change and reach there and say, this is not our last level. Let us go back there. So a man of faith can direct himself, can dictate himself. He can reach where he wants to reach. The new cars were not their desire. But they desire to live there. But when they reached there, if they found that that place is not what they expected, they will come back from the graves. They will come back and take the body of the grave. Look what faith can do. Faith can make a make something that is dead to resurrect. So today, we want to talk about it. I understand when the Bible says, I just want to read something there. They could have gone back if they really wanted to. I found something here. It, it says, says that in the book of Luke, 
chapter 2 Arya mo bokeng ya Luka chapter 2 When we read verse 26 Mola yo Luka chapter 2 re verse 26 to 31 to 31 Can you just read there you'll be surprised Arya baleng re to makala 26 to 31 It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ the Messiah the anointed Prompted by the Spirit, he came into the temple enclosure. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him the custom required by the law, Simeon took him into his arms and blessed and praised and thanked God and said, Now, Lord, you are releasing your bond servant to leave this world in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people. Did you hear that? The man of faith was led by the Spirit to the temple. And already the Spirit of God told him that he won't die. In other words, this man, it shows that he wanted to die before. It shows that there were times where things were tough, but he wished to be because dead. Because he knew where he was going. But now the spirit of the living God revealed to him that he won't die until he sees the salvation of Israel. And he was somewhere. When he was busy living. Tired with the world. Not having desire. Because he knew. Where he wanted to go. He knew there were times where. He wished he was already in heaven. But after he got the revelation. Anything that could happen to <laughs> him, he will just say, The Lord <laughs> has not been born. <laughs> Salvation <laughs> has not yet <laughs> come. He knew <laughs> that he will die. <laughs> after he sees <laughs> the salvation of Israel. But the Bible says he was prompted by the Spirit. He went to the temple and carried the child. And he understood that now his time has come. He prayed this prayer. Now Lord, you are releasing your bond servant to leave this world in peace. You are releasing me now. In other words, I'm happy now. I understand that it is fulfilled. He came without seed. He came prompted by the Spirit. He was a man of faith to the extent that when he see a sign and that sign tells him something. I, I, I was beginning to learn that men, men of faith People who live this kind of lifestyle, they cannot just die without a sign. They cannot just face things without a sign. He was given a sign that if he sees this, then he will die. And he said, let me be released. Let me come to you now with peace. This time now, I will come in peace. I wanted to come before. I didn't have peace. But this time, because this is fulfilled, I will come in peace. I was combining this with what happened to the cross. That the Lord knew what was supposed to be done with the last minute. It's only when he says, I'm thirsty. When they gave him that thing, he says, it is finished. He knew that they cannot do anything. He had to pray. I don't understand. I think. I'm, I'm just saying, I think. 
If the Lord could not pray that prayer, and unto my hands, my hands, I will touch my spirit. He could not die. He could not die. But he had a sign. I don't know if you hear it. He had a sign. We must have signs as we are living this kind of life. Our lifestyle must be directed by signs as God has promised you. There is something that God has promised you. As a person who is living this kind of life, there have to be signs in your spirit or be prompted by the spirit. If you can be directed by the Spirit, what God has said will come to pass. The Lord said, My Lord, now you can, you can allow me now to come to you. This is the same prayer that the Lord prayed. It is finished. Father, unto your hands. I put my spirit. And the Bible says he died. Jesus was losing all blood. He was supposed to have fainted and died. But he could not die. But when he knew that this has happened, he knew what is next. In our lifestyes, we need to know what is next. If, if we are living by faith, we must know what is next. Sometimes we pray wrong prayers. Pray for certain things that will never come because it is not next. But if you know what is next, if there's a delay, you, you won't change your prayer. You will stand by faith because you know what is coming. If you hear me shout hallelujah. That's what I say, my friend. If in our lifestyles, we know what is coming and we don't change when things are against us. We don't change because we know what is coming. Even Elijah could not change when he see that there's no cloud, he halted on to say, go out and see. The rain is coming. The rain is still coming. Until seven times, when the cloud was like a palm of the hand, and he said, hey, the rain has come. Can I tell you this? Don't change because your lifestyle does not allow you to change what you believe in. Hold on and it will come to pass. The issue, you must know the sign of what is coming. You must know the sign of what is coming. Out of my experience, I, I know some signs. There's one sign that I've experienced when I'm living my Christian life. The moment when I see some pressures, I know that there's a breakthrough coming. I don't know if you're hearing me. I'm sure you've also learned in your way there are some signs that can make you to stop complaining when nothing is happening. So I believe from today this can encourage you to live better in the Lord than to complain before him. If you're hearing me say amen. Let's read Galatians 3, verse 7. Verse 7. You will understand something there. Uh -huh. So understand that it is the people who live by faith with confidence in the power and goodness of God who are the true sons of Abraham. Here faith was mm. explained. What faith will do also hey, to me, was yeah. explained here. You need to understand that you must have confidence in the power and the goodness of God. You must understand that you must have confidence in the power and the goodness of God. When you understand this, 
you understand that you are living by faith because you believe in the goodness of God and you trust his power and such people you are defined that you are true sons of heaven sometimes when we we explain faith we say yeah, you know it's, it's the substance hope for and substance what what no, no, no. It's not substance, substance here. It's a confidence trusting in him and also in the goodness of God. When you start to believe in the goodness of God, in other words, things will be very tough. But you say, I know that this tough time is about to go by because I know the goodness of God. He's faithful. He will perform what he says. Do you know that uh, when you are facing some challenges, if you know the goodness of God, you will carry on trusting. You will carry on say, I'm not leave this God. I'll carry on focusing in this God, no matter what. So if you are hearing me say, so sometimes things are not going the way you are expecting. And remember, you don't change in this lifestyle. In this lifestyle, you don't change. If, if you are living a Christian life in this lifestyle, you don't change. But things will never come the way you are expecting. Don't forget the goodness of God. The goodness of God says you are a tiny embryo. Now, you're a matured man or a woman. This is the goodness of God. You are existing not because of the ability you have, but because of the goodness of God. So if God has made you to live to this far, He can also give you your heart desire. So you'll keep on trusting and you are a son of Abraham. Do you know that the Abraham was chosen by God. And the Bible says Abraham wandered from a land that he was going to a land he does not even know. You obey God. It means you also obey God. Even yourself. It means where you are. Like Abraham. He wandered and even reached the promised land without knowing. Even yourself, where you are, it means you are not finished. You have not reached the end. It, it, it's, a, it's your lifestyle. No one can stop you, no one can block you. Some people can laugh at your present state, but you are going somewhere if you are hearing me shout hallelujah. So now, when you are a son of Abraham, it must happen. The same way it happened. It happened to Isaac. He went to a land called Gera. And God said, hey, don't go back to Egypt. Even us, we won't go back to Egypt. We won't go to back to Egypt. Though we are in a land where we are not born, but when we sow in that land, we shall reap. I don't know if you are hearing that. You, you, you are a son of Abraham. Abraham. So if Abraham was blessed, you are also blessed too. Just so I'm blessed too. I, I mean, I cannot be different with what, with what my father was. I mean, if you are a child of someone who's rich, you are supposed to be rich. You are a child of Abraham. Just as I say, my friend, who is your father? Is he rich or poor? So how do you live your life? So you must live like Abraham. Abraham was a man of faith that he was surrounded. The Bible says, when you look down, he says, look, my children are like saints. When you look up, he looks at the stars and says, hey, look, my children are like stars. He understood that he had to shape a generation. He understood that what is starting with him is a lesson to the people who are following him. If you are here today, your children will follow you. I say your children will follow you. You are a son of Abraham. You are a daughter of Abraham. Your children will learn from you. 
Você tem um terremoto ou uma história? Terremoto ou uma história? We are writing history today. We want to develop a lifestyle. A lifestyle that is different. With what our father lived. Our father lived in Zimbabwe. 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 Our father struggled and failed. They faced a lot. It was the opportunity. But we are given 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 you see determine how far you go this is our lifestyle how far you see determine how far you go mm. there was a time where my mom can remember when, when, when I was studying church we used benches the day I bought a red tree in the middle of the night, I packed them. They were like this in my room. In in my room. In my room. They were like this. I packed them. When I look at them, I say, I have a very big church. I, I look at them and say, hey, if this started, I have a very big church. I, I begin to understand what is written here. How far? See is how far you will go. See yourself as a person who can break boundaries. See yourself as a son of Abraham, as a daughter of Abraham. That's why I say this is your teaching. It's for Charis teaching. This Let's read Hebrews 10 verse 38. Verse 38. Yes. But my righteous one, the one justified by faith, yes. shall live by faith, respecting man's relationship to God and trusting him. And if he draws back, shrinking in fear, my soul has no delight in him. I want us to understand that scripture. With what we are preaching here. This scripture is telling us that our way will never be small. There will be a time where you get tired and draw back. When you are in this lifestyle of faith, when other people are successful, don't ever think your time is not coming. Because there will be a time <laughs> where tough times will come. Don't shake back. Because you won't be pleasing the Lord. Don't shake back. When you put a plow and look back, it's not fit for the Can you just look at that verse? It says what? Yes. But my righteous one, mm -hmm. they are the one justified by faith. Yes shall live by faith, respecting man's relationship to God and trusting him. And if he draws back, mm -hmm. meaning shrinking in fear, my soul has no delight in him. Did you hear that? There will be a time where you cannot see where you are going. Think about when you buy a car, when you are paying it, and now they are calling it, they want to take it. And from there you start to say, this is where is God now. Yes. And from there you start to say, this is where is God now. Where is God now? Because your faith must be tested. I don't know if you're hearing me. Don't draw back. Many times we are drawing back because of the challenges we are going through. We find that we are no longer praying the way we are praying, fasting the way we are fasting. We draw back. 
You are no longer living that kind of life. Because things are not going accordingly. I want to show you another scripture. Read Hebrews 11 verse 17. Hebrews 11 verse 17 to 19. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested. Can you hear that? That is, as the testing of his faith was still in process. By faith, in process. when Abraham was tested. Abraham Ali. By faith. Katumen. Faith will bring temptation. The moment when you have faith. Look here. Faith, we know that it comes by the word. It looks like it's something that is coming inside from the word. You hear the word, but inside, there's something called faith comes to you. When you get that word, it comes to your spirit. Now, the moment when you have that Temptation will come. Test will come. It's not only temptation. Even test will come. Because here, what we are reading here, it shows that it was not Satan. It was a test. God wants to promote you. It looks like. Temptation is not there for promotion. Test is there for that. So the moment when you have a faith, you will be tested. Are you worthy for this? Not temptation. When you are tempted, you are drawn away by your desire. You are the one to stop those temptations. But test here. Because you are working with God. God will say, this person is worthy for this, but he must pass this. This is an exam. He must write a test. There's promotion in the Lord. Read, Mama. Uh -huh. As the testing of his faith was still in progress, uh -huh. offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promise, the promises of God, was ready to sacrifice his own son of promise, to whom it was said, through Isaac your descendants shall be called for he considered it reasonable to believe that God was able to raise Isaac even from among the dead. Indeed, in the sense that he was prepared to sacrifice Isaac in obedience to God, to God, Abraham did receive him back from the dead, figuratively speaking. In other words, Abraham here, he was ready to kill Isaac. Abraham Can you just think this issue of God giving you a promise? And say you holding it, waited for it. And when it is fulfilled, God said, okay, let's destroy this. Destroy it. And you can just say, no, I have waited for a long time. I mean, God, what, what are you saying? You, you said this. You, 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 you said you will give me a son and you give me a son. Are you the one who says, do you want me to kill this son for you? Abraham says, no. If you are the one who gave me a son and you are saying this, let me do what you are saying. Abraham was ready to sacrifice his son. There's something that I saw that we are lacking in Charis. We are not ready to sacrifice our life. We are not ready to sacrifice what we can do. I will tell you what happened in my spiritual father. He taught people that 
that if we can give God all, we are giving God everything. You are giving God yourself. Let's do this for the God's house. People, when they listen to you, they begin to sell their cars. But sell their their houses. Houses. They, they bring money to church. It changed the whole system. system. We begin to understand that there are people who are rich but in but that side of Tendo. We begin to see people rising up, becoming educated, and others went to live better lives. People who bring their cars, they have been to the church of God. They were ready to sacrifice what they know they have been given by God for his work. We have not reached that level. We have not reached a level where we can say, all of us here, we bring one car, one car. Tomorrow, if you have a car, if you have got one car, tomorrow you will be uh, going for Uber. Let's sell all of them for God's work. We have, we have not reached that level. Because we have not reached that level. Because, because somewhere, somehow, we feel like what we have received is coming from our ability. Abraham was not afraid because he knew that Isaac was from God. Think about a pastor can come and say, no, I'm I'm gonna lift up your hands, all of you who have got cars. Can you see you're even afraid to lift? Mm. You saw you're afraid yeah. even to lift. Because, because it's coming from your ability. I, I knew you won't lift your yeah. hands. Why? <laughs> because because you know you think. This car is coming from your ability. This house is coming from your, 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 the money you are saving. But if it is from your God, you will say, no, I trust God. My confidence is in God. And if he's taking this, this is our lifestyle. We have run away from true lifestyle. We are managing. We are busy managing, busy saving, and we don't understand our lifestyle. You are sitting like this, you are calculating. Two plus seven. It's not making nine. You are, you are calculating. That is why today many people. I'm not going to carry Bibles. They carry cell phones. Because in their cell, cell phone, they, they are checking. They, they, they are checking if somebody is stealing their money. <laughs> 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 they are checking there. I salute. It's still around. It's salute. It's salute. If there can be a deduction, they will go out like they are going to the but restroom. But when they move outside, they, they will run feet of 100 kilometers better than Bolt and enter Chalet to Chalet. We are living in a time that we are so much conscious living fear of losing. It's no longer faith. We are fearing of losing. You fear to lose everything. Hey, when someone, someone when you are driving your car, when I'm someone comes to you, you say, Hi. 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 When, if someone is coming, you are driving your car, someone <laughs> make a mistake. How much of money are you going to do? Hey, when I. But the people of faith, they have read it there. They see themselves going to work. They see themselves coming back. You don't even believe that God can fill your fridge. 
God might be looking at the small things you are doing and say, this one, let me give him favor. Because he's having this favor, this kind of faith will work in this person. Where others, when they reach there, the doors are locked. But when you reach there, it's open. How fit a one lemma? Did you do anything? The door just opened, you enter. And others reach there, the door locked. They try to see. You know, uh, I was reading something one time about someone who was telling, uh, talking about the heaven. That uh, the, the gates, the 12 gates of, of heaven, always open. They are not shut, they are always open. It is the self when you reach there. If you are not a Christian, they close. They close there. But when you are a child of God, when you reach there, you start to worship. They are open, you enter. When you reach there, you cry, you do whatever. Nothing happens. I pray that God will give you favor to have this kind of faith. I don't know if you hear me. The faith that will bring a lifestyle that will make people to glorify God. This week I was, I was asking my mama why Jacob why Jacob why was mm. he blessed? Why now should fetch? When he's wearing a wrong. Ah, ah, peri to je di I mean, he was not himself. May see it. Even the food that was. Me di joche ne di apeli lo ekana ko ila me si chon. The father were not the one. Papa ne di chona di swan da te di. Why was he blessed? Why? Why the father could not find? Papa sa kona u kweza ora eh eh. That this is Jacob. Who told Jacob? He says the voice is Jacob. Fi maraling si gila Jacob o man. But here when I touch outside, it's my son, he's saying. And Mama says, oh, Mama because oh, Jacob, Jacob understood the birthright. Understood the birthright. And that was favor that was given to him. And he believed. Mama said, he believed Mama that Mama. when the Bible says the younger, the, the older, the older will serve the younger. Did you hear that verse? The older Omuhulu. will serve the younger. You must change from now. If you think there are wise people, you must stay at the estate. Be a wise person. You must change. You must believe that you are the one that God is speaking about. Let's stop this thing of saying, hey, you know what? I, I didn't go to school. Hey, I don't have enough money. Hey, my situation is like this. Hey, believe. How, how do you want to stay in an apartment? Forever? I'm beginning to discover that <laughs> as a child of God, there's something that was set aside <laughs> for you and you don't know. And you're associating yourself <laughs> with anything that other people are doing. But there's something that was set for you aside. I pray that you receive it in the name of Jesus. I say receive it in the name of Jesus. This year, I pray that your life must be a wonder. A wonder to your neighbors. A wonder to your family. A wonder to your generation. I pray that this year, when you are beginning to develop a lifestyle, this is a lifestyle of greatness. A lifestyle where you cannot be hidden. You are like a, a, like a city on top of, this, of the mountain. Everybody has to know you. If you are hearing me shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Tell, your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say, hey, I'm not just bearing my surname. This surname I'm having will be known by me. Will be known because I'm hearing this message. 
When you leave here, you must go and check yourself in the mirror and say, hey, I'm a child of Abraham. And Prince, you say, hey, I'm a child of Abraham. I'm not a failure. What I'm going through, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Let's change our perspectives. Let's change how we do things. Yeah. Romans 10. We, we will read from 11 to 13. We will read from 11 to 13. This verse must help us all the time. 11 to 13, but Romans 10. It seems already to be. For the scripture says, yes. whoever believes in him, uh -huh. Whoever adheres to, mm. trusts in, yes. and relies on him, yes. will not be disappointed in his expectations. Did you hear that? Oh, God. Did you hear this? Sleepy what, what are you expecting? When now the village did me say. What are you hoping? Oh, cool. Read that verse again. Uh -huh. For the scripture says, mm. whoever believes in him, Meaning, whoever adheres to, trust in, mm. and relies on him, will not be disappointed in his expectations. Carry on reading, Mama. For there is no distinction between Jew and Gentile. For the same Lord is Lord of all, meaning of us. And he is abounding in riches, meaning blessings. For all who call on him in faith and prayer. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord in prayer will be saved. Did you hear that? Little. Whoever believes in. I understand that there, there are people end up knowing your wishes. I understand that. People end up knowing your wishes. You are expecting this. You wish this. You want to see this. That's what the Lord wants that to happen. God wants them to know. So that when he performs it, the name of God will be glorified. God does not want to disappoint you. If you hear me say it. What is your expectation? If you don't live without expectation, you will live with fear of failure, of fear of everything. You will live with fear of everything. You'll be asking yourself, something will happen, something bad will happen. Why don't you expect something good will happen? Change now from thinking about bad think about good. Good thing will happen. As a good thing will happen this year. As a good thing will happen for you this year. I wish people of charity, because remember I told you that this is the message of charity. I don't believe whoever is having a child here and following charity, that child will suffer. If you want to see God is with you, look at your children. I don't know if you're hearing me. But God wants you to have expectations. But also you are the one who set up your own expectations. Make sure that your expectation becomes big for the sake that it doesn't end on you. It ends in great, great, great children. Today when you are developing a spirit of relying on him, believing on him, adhering on him, trusting him, understand that 
you must have something for hope or expectation that God will perform. But it must not end on you. If it ends on you, you are not blessed. Because when it dies, your children will suffer. The reason why God wants to bless you, he you wants want your generation to learn from you. I say your generation will learn from you. I say your generation will learn from you. I say your generation will learn from you. Here it says, there is no distinction between Jew and Gentile. There is no distinction whether you are born in church or not. There is no distinction whether you are educated or not, or whether you are what language, the issue here you rely on it. Expectation will come. What you are expecting it it must come this year. In Jesus' name. The Bible says in Matthew 21, 22. It says whatever you ask in prayer. prayer Believing you receive. Do you have faith? Do you have expectation? The Bible says you will receive. It means if you are not seeing it now, it's coming. Don't change what you believe in because you are not seeing anything. You will. You will receive. Now I want to go to it's coming. That is your expectation. I want to tell someone here this week. I want to tell someone who's listening to me. May you receive something that has never come to your family. In fact, I'm praying mm. this year that on December time, Go and visit where you were born. You hear what I'm trying to say? I, I, I hey. want your friends, yeah. those who uh, grew up with, those who were, uh, I mean, to understand that you are no longer that person. You are serving the living God. How many of you will do that? God wants to honor you. You won't even preach. They will know. I don't know if you are hearing me. Either they say you are using a snake or you are using a donkey when they have jealousy. But when God gives them favor, they will repent. I, I, I am seeing God want to preach he, he wants you to preach not only, only by mouth, but by living this kind of lifestyle. Say, so I want to live a lifestyle that will bring many to God. You'll be surprised to find people you think they are far they are behind you. It has not yet happened. But I see you overtaking them. I see you overtaking them. You, you won't know how it has happened. But you will see it happen. If you are hearing me shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Do you want to see that happening? Tell you never say, hey, next time. I will sit with you. I will sit with you. I will sit with you. Because of what is coming. Hallelujah. Do you hear that? Say, I will sit with you. I'm changing from where I stay. I'm changing the seat from the church. In fact, listen, listen. The Bible says you must. Be careful of association. Eh? Mm. From today, this week, from next week, you must be careful of people you sit with in church. Before you sit in church. Is this because, you know, people are spirits. And they are dealing with demons. You just say, next week here, we church. We church. 
If you want to receive also, nicely, and you know your wife or your husband does not believe, find another seat. Find another seat. He said, no, this person says, this week is my week of another seat. Of another level. I don't know if you're hearing me. Amen. You, you must check. Otherwise, when you are, you are sitting there, you, you will just hear your husband say, did you cook? No, when, when, and you are, you are listening and to the word of the Lord. Lord. When, when we drink beer, did you cook? No, 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 no. And yourself, you are up and there. And when now you are just saying, oh, you are being a big guy. And now, it, it says, so mm. do you think you think Pastor is finishing now? And yourself, you are up in the street and receiving. The day from now, <laughs> until this end of June, <laughs> receive something. I say receive something. I say receive something. When you come here, if you have friends, are you hearing me? You, are, you want another lifestyle. Therefore, you have to change friends. So you, you must check friends. There's some friends who call you to say hello. And after that, you don't sleep well. They, they steal your sleep. And you get tired. And you cannot thank God now. So you need, you need better friends. I, I see everything changing around you. I say, I see everything changing around you. And from today, there are some cars you don't need to use. Because you are believing in a certain kind of a car. Your, your lifestyle must change. There are some clothes you will never wear. There are some food you will never eat. There are some places you will never go. Say, I'm changing everything. No, I'm changing everything. God bless you. God bless you. Keep watching Charis TV.